Hey everyone, welcome to the tutorial on slider control. Here you're going to learn about all the various types of slider controls in the physics toolbox. I'm going to start off by demonstrating the lift and fall control here, which is really useful for lifting things up and letting them naturally fall according to your gravity settings. I have this weight bench here, and as you can see it's in two separate pieces. I can move the weight bar up and down separately from the bench. I'll go ahead and add in my lift and fall control first. Right away, I'll go and select my bar as the target of my lift and fall control by going into the advanced panel and using the select function. Notice that unfortunately though, my bar will move in the wrong direction initially. Now with the motor control, I could simply select a different axis in the advanced controls. But with the slider function, I'm actually going to have to go in and adjust the pivot point of my prop. Slider controls will always operate along the red x-axis, so what I'll do is select Edit Pivot on the right, and then rotate my x-axis 90 degrees so that it's pointing directly up. You can see when I do that this time my bar will lift upward. Of course, my bench doesn't have any physics properties yet though, so the bar will fall directly to the ground. To fix that, I can just go into the physics properties and give my bench a static physics state, as well as make sure its physics mesh is set to self mesh. Now when I try the lift, you'll see my bar jerk around a bit because I still need to set the bar's mesh to self mesh as well. Well you'll notice that although I do that, it will still jerk around, this time even a little worse. There are a couple of things you can do in this situation. You can fine tune the physics properties of each prop to improve the result. You can set the playback to frame by frame instead of real time to see if more calculation time will improve the result. Or you can use dummy props, which is what I'm going to do here. I've taken off the physics properties for the bench now in order to avoid interfering with my dummies. And what I'm doing is creating two flat platforms that will offer better support for my falling bar. I'm adjusting the physics props for the first one here, making sure it's static. Then I can just duplicate it to the other side, and make sure that both are at the correct height. Once I've gotten them repositioned and sized appropriately, I'll make sure that I'm in frame by frame playback mode to get the best result, and then try lifting my bar once again. You'll see that it will rise and fall without jittering this time. Finally, I need to make sure to set my platforms as dummies and then press Ctrl D to hide them. This will be the final result here. Okay, the slider control itself is pretty simple. I have this scene with a train and some tracks set up to demonstrate. Notice again that the train's local red axis is facing the direction in which I want it to go. I'll quickly drag in my slider control here first, and I can Ctrl D again to make my dummy disappear and concentrate on my control panel instead. Now because my train is made up of a few sub props, I'll select it as a target from the content manager, ensuring that the entire thing is selected instead of part of the whole. When I test it out, you can see the train inch slowly along as I press the action button. Let's boost up the speed a bit now, and now you'll be able to see it move along a bit faster. I can press either directional arrow to make the train move in a different direction. If I go into the advanced panel once again, I can change the speed more dramatically by adjusting the multiply speed slider. Even if I increase that only a little bit, you'll see a dramatic increase in speed. You can fine tune your levels between both sliders to get the ideal results you're looking for. Okay, lastly, let's move on to the shuffle control. This control basically acts like your slider control, except it's automated to move back and forth at customized intervals. In this setup here, I have a tube set to a static physics state with a self mesh. It's semi transparent so you can see the dynamic spheres inside. Below the tube is a simple platform that is set to regulate how the spheres fall out of the tube. What I want to do now is add in my shuttle control. When I play back, you'll see the balls will simply fall through the platform as there are no physics values attached to it yet. When I go into my advanced settings for my shuttle and select the platform however, 
This will automatically assign it physics, and it will now hold the balls up. Next what we want to do is increase the shuttle speed. You'll notice everything will start moving as soon as I touch the speed slider, and the actual dummy will try to force its way under the bowl. Let's move the dummy up a bit once our speed is set to avoid that. Now you'll see in playback that my platform will move back and forth, but the distance is way too long. What I need to do now is go into the advanced panel for my control and adjust the range to a lower value. Remember that one grid length is equal to 100 units in measurement. You can see after I adjust that value and play back that my platform now regulates the falling spheres. There are a few other things I can adjust as well, including the delay, which you see me doing here. Notice that when I set that higher, my platform will delay once it reaches the extent of its first movement, which will allow all the balls to fall down in its absence. If I want to add my delay at a different time, I can go up and toggle the full cycle option on. This will cause the delay to happen after the full shuttle cycle has completed, which is what I want. Again, shuttle controls also have a multiply slider if, for example, you wanted your object to move back and forth really quickly, such as for a vibration effect. Doesn't work too well with my makeshift ball distributor here though. There are endless ways in which you can use all of these slider controls in your project. The only limit is your creativity.